Welcome back to TarHillIllustrated.com, or if you're watching us on our YouTube channel, that is called Tar Hill Illustrated. I'm THI publisher Andrew Jones, and joining me is THI staff writer Brandon P., and we are back to continue grinding out our preview series, if you will, of each position group for North Carolina as the Tar Heels gear toward the start of fall camp. Players report August 1st. August 2nd is the first practice. The season opener is September 2nd in Charlotte against South Carolina. In fact, South Carolina, home against App State, home against Minnesota at Pitt. Very difficult first month for the Tar Heels, which will be a crucial fall camp. But, of course, we will be there every opportunity, every availability allowed by the program. We will be there at practice, pressers, and have mega coverage on our site tarheelillustrate.com and a lot of stuff here on the youtube channel so brandon we continue to just crush each position group as we grind it out here it's kind of the way we're looking at it because we're going pretty in depth and we do a lot of research on each position group to try to find some interesting nuggets of information and also cobble together a lot of the inside information we have attained over the last few months and Today, we're looking at the cornerbacks, which is a very, very interesting room because the starters a year ago are gone. They were yeah. entrenched guys, could have come back, they're gone. Five-star Tony Grimes, he's gone to Texas A&M. Storm Duck, whom Mac Brown had a couple of times referred to as a future NFL player, he's at Louisville after spending some time at Penn State in the spring. So we, I have gone on the record saying I think that that the, the swap here is an upgrade. And we're going to go into each of the players here, Brandon. But before we do, do you share that assessment that that what they what they lost versus what they brought in to actually maybe in better shape moving forward? Yeah, it's I would have to say so. They I would say uh I mean obviously things didn't work out for Carolina's previous cornerback duo. For the previous two seasons and they were picked in the preseason to be one of the the best duos in the ACC, and that just never materialized on the field on a consistent basis. So the group, the group as a whole, they just struggled to cover in man to man coverage. So it forced Gene Chizik to kind of back them off a little bit. And AJ, you know, in football, if you're not being aggressive on a consistent basis, you're probably going, to, you're probably losing that matchup. And with the coaching staff not always trusting them, to, trusting to leave the corners on the island, and it kind of yeah. limited some of the things they could do. Uh, defensively to confuse the opposing quarterbacks. Uh, they did. They started blitzing more towards, I would say, about the mid to about mid point, mid, yeah. yeah. About the midpoint. They started blitzing more to speed up the decision making of the opposing quarterback. But you know, when you do that, that's with with the UNC secondary last season, that was pretty much a coin flip. And you were hoping yeah. that it landed on whatever side you pick. So with all that being said, it's not really surprising that UNC would go out and get, you know, new corners out of the transfer portal. And so to answer your question, yes, I do think what they brought in is an upgrade. And I think Elijah Huzzy is the most intriguing prospect coming from yeah. the FCS level. So he's coming from the FCS level. So there will be questions among fans as to whether he can consistently hold his own at this level. And while there are some things that don't automatically translate uh, in football from one level to another, I think playmaking is, is one of those things. And, and you know the process that re players, recruits have to go through, uh, the scouting process they go through amongst the UNC coaching staff before they're before they're offered a scholarship so the fact that the UNC coaches have offered them a scholarship you should that should make you worry a little less and another thing is I think the difference the biggest difference between FCS and FBS is going to lie between the offense and the defensive line I think when you get to the skill positions the drop off in talent is much less I, I think a lot a lot of kids end up in FCS because there's just not enough scholarships at the FB, FBS level for everyone so you still have some really really talented kids at that level playing so if it so so the biggest question is can the production that he had at the FCS level translate to this level and I think if it can, North Carolina secondary is going to be miles ahead of what it was last season because last season there was no playmaking. And I would say in the secondary, but especially amongst the corners, Storm Duck did have three interceptions last season, but 
They came against Georgia Tech, whose quarterback situation was abysmal. Virginia, who was playing this worst. Well, I can't. Yeah, that yeah. was the worst offense in the league last year. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't want to. I didn't want. I wanted to think about. I was going to say that, but I, didn't, I wanted to think about it before I said that. And uh, he had a train wreck. There were train wreck on offense. And he had one against Florida A and M. So it's like they they needed they needed guys that who can make plays. And I think with Elijah Husney, they bought in a guy who is a bona fide playmaker. About how bad was – they were one for 16 on third down against Illinois last year. That's just disgusting. Uh, to your point, you made a really good point that I think a lot of fans need to understand about the the fact that they played – Gene had the corners playing so far off the ball. I'm telling you guys, we, we said it during the year, and I can tell you right now, the staff did not trust the corners' ability to play man coverage. That's just, That's bottom line. So they didn't. They couldn't. They couldn't afford to. So if you at least play off and try to keep stuff in front of you, team will have to work its way down the field. But if you play up and press coverage and a guy gets beat, the quarterback throws over the top, you give up a touchdown right away. So yeah. that's what they that's what they chose to do. Uh, let's go ahead and go over the guys. We'll start with Elijah Huzzy since you brought him up. I've had a chance to talk to Elijah a few times, and he said that as soon as his name got in the portal, went in the portal, he heard from Carolina within a couple hours, and what they communicated to him that they were looking for is someone that can make plays, which you alluded to, in particular the, the interceptions. He had six last year. He had six the year before. It's 12 interceptions. And the thing, to go to your point about the FCS versus FBS thing, I agree with you 100% about that. And what the staff told him and what what Elijah told me is, look, if you can find the ball and get the ball at the FCS level, you can find the ball and get the ball at the FBS level. And ask Mississippi State if he can cover. Yeah. He did a pretty nice job in that game. So they really, really like him a lot. It took him a few weeks to sort of transition in and kind of get used to all the bells and whistles being around where you're at a place where there's such a full throttle emphasis on football on almost a daily basis. But he adjusted by the third or fourth practice in spring. He was rolling. And the other thing, too, is that keep in mind, Carolina's cornerbacks in the four years since Matt came back have a combined total of eight interceptions. Eight. Elijah has 12 the last two years. I think that's important to know. He is a guy that can play press coverage. He is a guy who's pretty physical. He's a he's a solid guy. If you ever st- see him in the uniform, I mean, he's solid dude. He he doesn't look like some other guys that Carolina's had at corner in the past that maybe a little bit thinner, don't look as solid, and they they didn't really they had a little bit of an aversion to playing the run. Elijah will play the run. He'll hit you. Yeah. He could cover, and he can be physical in those 50-50 balls as well. I, I, look, he was an FCS All-America. You go look at NFL rosters, and where you find the FCS guys are at skill positions. You don't find as many of them at the uh, at, in the trenches. You do find quite a few at the skill position. This guy's considered an NFL prospect, and I think it's a huge pickup for Carolina. He's significantly better than what Carolina had there last year at corner. Armani Chapman is another guy. He's not getting a lot of attention because he didn't participate in the spring, but you know, he was at Virginia tech for a long time. He had a red shirt year and a COVID year. So he's, this will be his sixth year of college football. He's a mature guy. He's played just under 2000 snaps. He has 665 snaps last year, had an interception. He's a very experienced guy. I, I, I could see him starting at the other corner. He's going to be fully healthy when fall camp starts. And you, there, there is no substitute for experience. So if you think about Chapman and Huzzy, you've got more experience at corner next year than you had a year ago. Because remember, Storm Duck, even though he'd been around a long time, he missed a ton of time because of injuries, which affected his development. In this particular case, you've got two guys that have played, what, 3,500, almost 4,000 snaps in their college career. And and by the way, they get two years of Huzzy, one year of Chapman. So what do you think about uh, Chapman in addition to Huzzy being at the other corner? Well, I'm always talking about translations from one level to another. I know, I know. I'm always mentioning what translates from one level to another level. And there are certain things that translate, like size translates, speed translates, I would say, uh, play and playmaking. Decision-making yeah. and playmaking, it translates. Hands, no matter- hands. and skill position, hands. IQ, yeah. A lot of things that 
you it just it just translates like that's why i'm i'm when it's not the safety podcast but that's why i'm really high on will hardy because he was the he was a lead he led the state of georgia in interceptions as a senior in high school and i know playmaking translate it translates so yeah. the fact, so the fact that they uh they went out and they got you know a playmaker in huzzy and armani chapman he doesn't he hasn't shown the same playmaking ability as huzzy but he is uh, he has started 25 games which is two seasons two full seasons worth of football which is always important in in the ACC and and why he why, like I said while he hasn't got the interceptions that Huzzy has he has shown that he can he can be kind of a shutdown corner um according to PFF in the 2021 season he allowed the least coverage yards in the ACC and I just think that's going to be very so so I think I think you and he has a, a pretty good duo coming in, a guy who can make the plays, and then a guy a, a, on the other side, a solid guy with the experience that's going to be there when the pass is thrown, which is, you know, sounds very basic, but I think UNC fans can really well, appreciate What you're talking about is steadiness. Yeah. And Grimes and Duck were, way, were incredibly inconsistent. So if you have a guy like Huzzy that can, Huzzy that can make plays, and then you have a guy who's steady like Chapman on the other end, on the other side, that's an upgrade. But you also got to think about Marcus Allen, who played late last year and played well as a true freshman. And I think that that they love his upside. They, yeah. they, they think he can be a really good player in the ACC for a few years. Legend Cavasa is the transfer from Ohio State. You know, he did not look good early last year. He struggled big time. But he ended up playing pretty well, and he had a good spring. He played 349 snaps last year. He had a good spring. I think there's a physicality a little bit of dog in there with him that started to come out. And I think we saw a little bit of it in the spring. He he could certainly in the mix there. And with those four, you have four guys. I think the staff feels pretty good about right now. Then you throw in Teon Holloway into the mix. He redshirted last year as a freshman. He's got a lot of high-end potential too. I haven't really gotten a lot of inside intel about Teon just yet, but this is going to be an important fall for him because – He'll be in his second year, full year in the program, and he has to start showing some progress. So I would say sometime later in August, I may have a little note on the board about where Tayon is. And, and you know, Don Chapman's played some corner before. And John, there's a steadiness to Chapman. He could play the star. He could play corner. He could play a safety. He's, he's just a football player back there. And I think if there are any issues or injuries – Attrition, uh, Chapman could always be an option at some point, but I think you're looking at Chapman and Huzzy starting, uh, Allen and Cavazos playing in reserve, but getting on the field because I think that those guys are going to press more, which means they're going to run more and they're going to exhaust more. So I, they're going to need a, a, a backup at both spots to get on the field and continue that press coverage some, continue some of the uh, uh, um, a little bit of the alteration in the way they're going to play this year. Cause you don't want a corner playing 75 snaps. If they're in your face, every snap, they got to come off the field, some and get a rest. And because I don't think there's a huge drop off with Allen and Cavasa. So certainly by mid season, there shouldn't be a huge drop off. You'll see them get on the field as well. Yeah. And um, uh, Marcus Allen and Teon Holloway are interesting because they both have high they both have the physical traits the high end talent and Marcus Allen in particular like you said he showed signs he showed I think in my opinion he showed signs of someone who could be a potential breakout candidate for this season I agree yeah or maybe or maybe he's one season away but he's shown that he but towards the end of the season particularly against Clemson and Oregon he was put under the bright lights and he looked comfortable some guys look like a deer yeah, deer in headlights. He looked very comfortable in that role. And then, you know, with Teon Holloway, like I say, he's a talented player. We haven't gotten much of an opportunity to see him yet, but the cornerback position is one of the is one of those positions where it only takes one offseason to see drastic improvements in a player. Yeah. So, so, you know, it could happen. And, you know, the, Carolina desperately needs this because this has been a weakness for weakness of theirs for for some time now it's time for time for it to get it's just been so inconsistent i think that's the problem because you could be really good on nine snaps and if you give up a 50 yard touchdown on the 10th snap then you don't grade out very well and you shouldn't because that's it's sort of like being a closer in baseball if you come in there and inherit a runner and you let two guys score you lose the game you could be great for nine straight starts but then you blow one you lose the game so corner is a very 
very uh, challenging position in that respect. By the way, uh, Allen played 175 snaps. He graded out at 66.2, which for a true freshman who was thrown in there, uh, f- really for the Georgia Tech game, I mm-hmm. think that that's a pretty good grade. And I agree with you. Uh, he's. I don't know how – I don't know what his off season has been like. I don't have a lot of information about that. So much of the focus has been on Huzzy learning about Chapman and people talking about Cavazos, but uh, I think Allen could be a steady player. And I agree with you. There's a possibility he could break out this year. If nothing else, he could be a third corner. Cause I think he could play both sides. Uh, and, and I think Cavazos could probably play both sides, but I think Allen might be more multiple than Cavazos in that sense. So um, you're going to see them on the field regardless. So those are four guys I think you're going to see on the field, barring injury. And, and I think it's a solid group. Now, they have a lot of proving to do. Huzzy has to prove he can do it at the FBS level. Chapman left Virginia Tech for a reason. He says he, you know, a lot of guys just want to change the pace. So he's got to prove as a six-year guy that he's worthy of all those snaps. Allen's got to prove he's progressed. Cavazos has got to prove he's progressed as well. So there's a lot of proving to do there, but I do think the potential of them being at least collectively solid or better and and consistent is there. Last year's group was solid at times, but it wasn't consistent. So I would shoot, if I'm a Carolina fan and I'm watching this and I'm thinking about the corner spot, shoot for consistency in your mind, wish for consistency. And if there's some upticks from consistency, that's a pretty good thing for this group. Yeah, no, one hundred percent. Last, I, mean, I think they were consistent, they, but they were consistently inconsistent. If that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. The there was an ebb and flow. That's the only thing you could. When the ball was thrown last season, there was no, there was no confidence that oh they're going to break this up. There was like ah, this is might be a t- it's a good chance that this is a touchdown. Like what all, all the balls in the air every single time. Yeah. It's just. The they, truth they, is they, told, you know what the press box is like. There's not a lot of talk in the press box, but there is reaction sometimes to certain plays. Yeah. Sometimes there are funny comments made. Sometimes people, you know, we talk a lot about reviews and that kind of thing. The rare times that a corner made a great play and broke something up, there was a reaction like, oh, well, where's that been? Yeah. So, yeah. all right, yeah. we've got one more to go. We've got nine in the books. We've got safeties coming up. So come back, check us out. Training camp's about here. I'm excited, Brandon. We get a chance to get a lot more intel. And that's one of the things that drives me about covering this stuff for a living because intel is king. Because the more we learn, the better we do a job of reporting to passionate Carolina fans what's going on with the Tar Heels. For Brandon P., I'm Andrew Jones. Thank you for checking us out and stopping by.